that I said when I said, what do you get when you cross a mentally ill loner with a society that doesn't care about him and treats him like trash? It's a joke. A book? It's a joke. Oh, a joke. He says you get what you deserve. You don't know who you don't know who's in the, you don't is somebody does somebody play the Joker or is the Joker just the name of the movie? Correct, yeah. Joker is the name of the movie, and the actor that played him did a really good job. And if you watch that movie, you'll get a better understanding of mental health. Lauren showed it to me right before she died. Where did you watch? She was it? raped by nine men at one time. Well, that's definitely very traumatic. And she was molested by her dad. Sure. Yeah, her, she was molested by her dad her entire life. Everywhere she goes, she carried something around with her that people wanted to just sexually abuse her. And I came in there, and I was so good to her. Wow, I was so good to her. And so how long were the two of you? Um, I, she's the reason I married Emily in the first place. She's the reason I married my first wife in the first place. She's like, yeah, you should be with her because there's nothing about her that you, she wouldn't love. Also, I was the best man at her older brother's wedding because we were best friends. I caught the garter and she caught the bouquet. We did the song and dance, the seance that led, that foreshadowed our relationship to follow. It was too short of time that I had with her. So you knew Lauren before you married your wife? I loved Lauren before I married my wife. But she was already in a committed relationship of 10 years. For 10 years? Yeah, so she wasn't an option. And so how did the two of you end up reconnecting? I, I can't imagine. I wanted to reach out to my friend John. Um, to talk it's for about any other reason than delay. That was going on. At this point. He'd always lift my spirits and. He didn't answer the phone. He didn't answer the phone. He didn't answer the phone. So then I messaged Lauren and I said, hey, do you want to hang out and talk for a minute? Since like, because she's the next best thing. She was like the female version of John. And I went over there and she said, just how sexually frustrated are you based on that video? And um, after that, we had that sexual encounter. She decided, I don't want another girl to ever touch you again. And this is not what we, what she intended at first, which was to hang out and, and be crazy and stuff. And she let me move in that day, which I asked Chris if I was allowed to do it. He said, based on the separation of my first wife, I was just totally lawful for me to live with her and move in with her and for everything to work out. And then when she died, I missed my drug test. And then you want to lock me up. So I guess that changes plans on how quickly I was going to leave the state because I was already going to ask for permission to go in September. But now I'm not really going to ask you for anything. Well, I remember that Mr. Semke asked or mentioned that last time, I believe, right? No, he didn't. Nope, he didn't. No. In fact, you barely let me get my alcohol cover off. Or maybe you're the one that mentioned it, but I thought somebody mentioned it before. I did. And every time I go to say something to you, he tells me to, every time I go to say something to you, he tells me to stop talking. But anytime I say something to you, something starts to change. So I don't understand why he keeps trying to hold me down. Well, so I can tell you that um, when I start talking, then you start listening, and then you you start to have sort of an empathetic heart. You know, I wanted to go to law school, but I was too poor. Too poor. Started eating and cooling because I never graduated high school because juveniles screwed that up for me. You are, but you did you get your high school diploma or did you get a GED? I got a GED. I quit high school and went the next day and took a test. And you passed it pretty well, pretty easily. Every I would I I did the things and then I walked out and and people were still in there didn't even finish theirs like I was done it with it in half the time didn't even need to double check my answers it was that easy. 
No, you're it was much you're harder to get a state contractor's license than it was the GED. Sorry, what was that? I said, I said you. This is absolutely person. riveting. Do you still want to go to law school? Oh, I know that. Why did you want to go to law school? I don't want anything before? to do with the law. Judge is trying to save him right now. Okay, fair enough. Because they like to argue. Okay. We are off the legal script entirely. So it's a selfish ambition. It's not really to help anybody. It's just because I like to argue. So that's not really of value to me any longer. I'm only out for others, not myself. Absolutely. So do you want treatment? No, I want to be left alone. So when you said that you would rather go to treatment than go to jail, were you being honest with me or not? I would rather go to treatment than jail, but if I'm going to get a tether put on, I'd rather be dead. Well, then how am I supposed to know that you're in treatment, sir? So here's my deal. We're I'm going in end, circles. End up getting locked up eventually. The best case that I have. The and judge knows it. I have is just run away. Dip on out. Maybe I'll get locked up. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'm prolonging the inevitable. Maybe I'll just be just fine. I think somewhere completely else for my entire life. Well, why do you think that you're going to be locked up? eventually if you are well i'm just receiving. saying like if i'm out there and you guys put down like a triple star like five stars like yes this guy if you pick him up he needs to come back for sure well then yeah maybe i'll get locked up if i get pulled over on a speeding ticket or or uh hazard uh, like my my back light's not working or something like that but maybe i will never get pulled over again maybe i'll never run into the law ever again maybe i'll be just completely fine and honestly i'd rather take the chance on that Just like the Haitian individual who I who asked me to cut his tether off with the sawzall, which I would not do. There was a Haitian individual that wanted you to cut their tether off. I thought he was crazy. Now I'm like, sorry, I it broke up again. No, that's okay. You thought he was crazy, and now you're what? Now I'm like, oh, I see your point. <laughs> Also, also letting him vape, it just shows we've we've. I don't left. think I'll ever get picked up, even if I did get pulled over. I'd be like, ah, whatever. We've completely left the norms of court behind because Where of how not serious my crime is. Because my crime's laughable. Because my whole life is a joke. Hence why I love that movie so much. Why is your whole life a joke? Well, he thinks so. Like a joke. I'm trying to reposition this computer. What's that? Well, look at the, the first right now. Day. It was hilarious. All it was was crapping lying emojis the entire time. Everywhere I go, I tell jokes. Hey, what's Bruce Lee's favorite drink? What? How? What's Adolf Hitler's favorite letter? I don't know either, but it's not Z. Uh, wow. I got another really good one, but it's like two minutes long. What's that one? <laughs> Give us the two minute that one. I don't know why the connection got so crappy all of a sudden. I got Verizon pay five hundred dollars a month for my business account, and it doesn't even cooperate. I got my golf clubs. I got all my stuff packed up it all up. Uh, this judge is doing great. What's that two minute joke? We're not doing court anymore. We're, we're doing a mental health rescue. So my Saturn's guy. 
make money for child support once the baby's born. What's your two minute joke that you said you have? Never get to be a dad. You can sell Oh my dad. gosh, there's a cockroach in here, dude. Ew. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. See, that's another sign I need to leave. Holy cow. I don't think that this is a joke. I'm not trying to take your guys' time lightly at all. I just want you to let me go and leave me alone. That's it. Just leave me alone. Well, you said you had, a, you, said you had another job. Outside. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Well, there's no punchline to it, if you want to know. Okay. Well, go ahead. All right. It's pretty good. It's a dad joke. Um, so the other day, I was on this hill doing kung fu. And um, I'm standing at the top of the hill doing all my kung fu moves. Like this. It's got to be. And um, I look down at the bottom of the hill, and there's this guy down there with a long, skinny isosceles triangle shaped beard, really long. He's an Oriental fellow, also doing kung fu, which I recognize because it looks very similar to what I'm doing, besides the fact that his moves are much more concise. Out of nowhere, a black bull runs up on him, charging him. And um, he turns around and says, Bruce Lee's favorite drink. What's up? And the bull stops in its tracks and turns back around and runs away. And I said, oh my gosh, how in the world did he do that? And um, so I run down there and I say, hey, how'd you do that? And he says, well, ah, yes, young grasshopper. One must know the bull line. So I go, what the heck's he talking about? The bull line. So I go home, talk it over with the bull. Hold on, Anthony. Your Anthony, your connection's not so great right now. And then, oh, there we go. Guys, crazy. Uh, line, which I don't know what it is. I think it was a line that the deja vu. Now I'm Anthony, Anthony, your connection's a little bit spotty right now. Uh, and I'm from so I'm doing my uh kung fu stuff that I was doing the first day and I looked down and out of nowhere a hawk dives down at him and he grabs the hawk with his hand um, and throws it right back off into uh, the sky and I go how the heck did he do that so I run down there and I'm like hey dude how'd you do that and he goes ah yes young grasshopper one must know the hawk line I'm like what the heck is this guy talking about the hawk line he's got me totally confused and i'm like what is even kung fu you know not something that i thought it was and uh anyway i go back home and i come back the next day i'm doing my kung fu again just like i did the prior two days i look down the hill and the guy's down there and he someone runs up on him <clears throat> three dudes actually and start beating the mess out of them punching them punching them punching them no kicking just straight punches and I'm like, wow, he can't even handle this from a person. That's terrible. They run his pockets. They take all of his money. They take his belt, not the black one, the Louis Vuitton, because people care much more about money than they do about people. They run off with all of his stuff. So I run down there to go help him out. He stands up on his own, on his own accord, and he looks me in the eyes, and he tells me something I will never forget. Ah, yes, young grasshopper. There is no punchline. Oh, well, there you go. That was, a nice, that, was, that was pretty interesting. Pretty long, pretty interesting. I shortened it. A tattoo <laughs> artist told me that while we were getting our tattoos and I got a kick out of it. We only kicked out of it. Oh, 
Yeah, right, we, got, we got we got ants. What's that? We got ant tattoos, like I told you. I didn't see where you said that your tattoo was. Oh, there. Oh. And she got hers behind her ear, and they used to hang out all the time. <laughs> oh. Well, you, got, you got a tattoo. And so, um, where do you go for that? Uh, I don't even remember what the place was called. I tried calling it back again, and they didn't. Um, I, I couldn't. I couldn't figure out where it was. I actually didn't oh, like it either okay. because when the guy was uh, giving her her tattoo, he was leaning up against her butt really bad and made her feel really uncomfortable. Did you get the tattoo behind your ear at the same at the same location? Yeah, I usually do two at a time. I got this one just recently. It says Elohim, which is the name of God on my ring finger. Uh, because I don't plan on ever marrying another woman ever in my entire life. When did you get that one? This is live. Um, at the Allen Park Street Fair the other night, my friend Tony was actually working the front desk. And um, he was the one who gave me my first tattoo as a kid. And I was like, wow, I'm in the right place at the right time. So he gave me that one. And then he also gave me this one, which is Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 3 through 5. Which is how I know I'm sealed by Elohim. The term saved is not an existent thing. It's not even real um, in the context that we believe it to be. Hence why I left the church. I would talk to Chris about these things, but he doesn't believe in God. Wow. All right. That's a deep subject. What? Wow. That one's even deeper. Um. So where does Tony work? Um, right, right next to Marshall Music at that tattoo parlor. Oh, okay. What? And so it's by. So you didn't get. Tony didn't do your other tattoo with Lauren? Nope. Poor judge is just grasping at straws to say I anything. Would, I refuse to go back to that place. Like I said, that guy disgusts me. Keep this guy talking. So is uh, the reason why we're still on the uh, Zoom because you're going to continue to try to convince me to go to a hospital? Like, are we at the same cell like stalemate? Because I'm not, I'm not going to go to the hospital. Why not? I'm also not going to go to jail. I'm not going to accept a tether. I'm going to, I'm just going to be a needle in a haystack, and I'm just going to be a homeless guy for the rest of my life. Uh, you're going to get you going to do your picked up in a few minutes here, one way or the other. Conduct your business. Uh, all I do is beep, beep, boop, boop. I go beep, beep, boop, boop on my phone, send someone to go somewhere, collect the money, just, and, and, and then pay them out. I just subcontract it all. It's really easy. Making money for me is like one of the easiest things in the world. I wake up and get three grand cash just like that. And then go and then I go out to eat. And then I sit there and figure out a way to make a little more money. And then I, I do all my Bible studying and all that stuff. Today actually is a spiritual day for me based on the lunar calendar. Do you know what the word moon means in Latin? Month. The word what? Moon, like our lunar, our oh. moon. It actually means months, and that's actually the calendar we're supposed to be going by, not the Gregorian, not the one that was created by Pope Gregory, because uh, Rome is actually the fourth. He couldn't have been more explicit. That rules with seven heads on all seven continents. You read all about in Revelation. Threatened self-deletion numerous times. Oh. I don't know when the end of the world is coming, but if you look at this day and age that we live in, we know our world works in numbers, right? What number is Michael Jordan? What number, what number is LeBron James? What year are we in? What's two divided by three? You got a calculator? What's two divided by three? I'll give you a hint. <laughs> That's the year we're in. Yeah, okay. Six, 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 forever. That's the year we're in. And that's why I'm facing all this opposition, even though I've barely done anything wrong. Spiritual warfare, spiritual principalities, of the air 
are attacking me and they're playing out through the flesh. I'm not an idiot. And people would call me crazy. I get it. It doesn't make sense to most people. I don't expect it to. I'm a modern day prophet and I know that. Now, oh now I'm crazy, right? Now I'm nuts. Now you were crazy no, before that. Hey, no, if you read Galatians 4, 16, just... it says, as a result of me telling the truth, have I become your enemy? Everyone in my life has. Okay. So you said that you wake up and you earn $3,000 a day? It depends on the day. People out? Oh, it, it just depends on the day. Some days I uh, lose 50 bucks. Some days um, I clear 10 grand. Some days, I mean, yeah, I mean, I make ridiculous money. I'm glad I never became a lawyer. I'd be working way too hard for the same money. Well, you got that right. <laughs> well, maybe not even that much money, actually. But, um, so I just hope they come get them safely at this point. Uh, well, yeah, except for the days that I'm not needs supposed treatment. to work, I get um, bread and, and peanut butter and jelly, and just because, like, I believe today to be the true Sabbath day based on the lunar calendar and the way that I study the moon. And so, therefore, I'm not allowed to buy work today, period. That's why I own my own business, because if I worked for somebody else, they would force me to work. That's how that works, yes. So you just dispatch other people out? Oh, do you know why I started a heating and cooling company? Huh? Why? Oh, dispatch. No, um, I wouldn't force anyone else to work for me either on a day like today either. I won't even take calls that someone wants. I go, oh, uh, yeah, you can fill out our uh, request form, but I'll look at it tomorrow. That's about it. Now, I would go run a call if it was for free because there's someone in need, but not as a transactional, not as a transactional uh, purpose. What is, what is the difference? Like, if I'm going to accept money, it's for my own gain, and I wouldn't do it for that. Like, if I was going to someone's house because I feel like they're in need of something beyond um, their uh, air conditioner being fixed, I would fix it for free. And then I would address whatever other issue. They, if they said, my husband just died and X, Y, Z, and my cooling is out. Then, yeah, I'd go there masked as I'm going there as a cooling guy. And I would hook them up. And I would pray with them, talk with them, show them scripture and spread the gospel. Because that's the way that we're supposed to be doing is meeting in people's homes. Not in big church buildings. That is the true great commission. And you want to know who got locked up all the time for his name's sake? Peter, Paul. John, they all got thrown in jail, just like me. You know what I did while I was in jail? Preached, preached Yahweh and Yeshua in that, in that jail. And I did remain untouched. However, I was scared as can be. I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, but I feared all the evil. So can you, I'm, I'm curious, why are there two names? You're telling me Yahweh and Yeshua? Yeshua, yes. So the Father is Yahweh. That's that's He's the Maker of heaven and earth. And then we needed someone who who, who was going to make it so we don't have to sacrifice goats anymore and shed blood, and someone to uh, uh, get rid of the enmity between the Jew and the Gentile. So now we are grafted in and have full access through the blood of the true Messiah, who is not Jesus. That's the Antichrist that's going to deceive everyone till the very end. That's Revelation thirteen eighteen. And then if you read Revelation 14, 1, the very next verse, it says exactly what the seal of Elohim is. It's the Father's name. I guess they, they've got a yeah. lot of things to consider going in there. Exodus uh, chapter is 13, there. Verses, one, uh, verses 8 through uh, 10 will tell you what the true seal of Elohim is as well. The memorial between your eyes and the, the sign on your hand is for everybody. you actually partake in the feast the of the bread. The household, then if you read Ezekiel, the officers. Chapter 9, verses 3 through 5, it's the same thing. This is the verse that I know sealed me because when my wife wouldn't touch me one night, I, I had a true revelation and experience in my own basement in my house that I'm not allowed in anymore. Which, by the way, did you know that the Messiah had no place to lay his head either? I had a revelation in my and basement. He somewhere else every single day as well. Right. Do you know what do you know what age he was when he started his ministry? 30 years old. I'm 31. I'm a little late. I'm not the Messiah, but we're called to do exactly what he did and follow in the footsteps he did. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do we even know what the 10 commandments are to begin there? Most people don't. There's 10,000 promises in scripture. Most Christians can't name 10. Did you know that? 
Or 10,000 what? Promises in scripture, and most Christians can't name 10. Can you name the 10 commandments? Yeah. I mean, it's a good point. They can't roll up with their. And then what are the what are ten, know, What are some of the ten thousand promises? Mars lights blaring. Um, well, let's just start with the rainbow. <laughs> Do you know what the rainbow represents? What's that? It's a covenant between him and us at the time of Noah that he would never flood the earth again. Do you know what the rainbow represents now? What it covers up now? Skittles. Up two ugly things: gay and pride. Two detestable things in the sight of him. They perverted our rainbow to protect something that he hates. How about that? You like you like apples? How about them apples? Apples? Oh, how about them apples? What's another promise? I know that. I know that. Um, then in that day, in that day when we call on his name, we will be saved. Okay. Okay. The dead and him are gonna arise first. That's a promise. And do you know what a prophet is? Okay. Someone who speaks the truth of something that's going to happen, and then it does. So if you're reading Revelation, you believe it to be true, and you preach it, you are a modern-day prophet by definition. Okay. So that one doesn't really make. I don't. That one I don't really know very much. What about another promise? Um, well, one of them I just told you would be that um, when we tell our kids the story of what happened during the time of Exodus, as we partake in the feast and we tell them exactly why we're doing it, that we are sealed from that day forward. Also, we're supposed to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All the feasts are supposed to be appointed from year to year forever, period. Oh. And Easter is not one of those days. In fact, Easter is as, as pagan as it gets. Same thing with Christmas. And I bet you, I bet you Chris Shemke, who doesn't even believe in God, celebrates Christmas. So why do you think some people celebrate Christmas if they don't believe in God? <laughs> you know, I don't know why people who believe in God celebrate Christmas. <laughs> or 4th of July, to that point. Why is that? Because they're traditions of men, and scripture specifically says don't speak on them, don't don't do them. Here's another thing. Do you know what the word pharmaceutical actually means in Latin? What, what sorcery. word? Sorcery. Pharmaceutical. Oh, pharmaceutical. Okay. It means, means it's sorcery? Looks this up. It means it means sorcery. Yes. And so when we intake, when we ingest these pills, which by the way is what killed Lauren because she took, her doctors prescribed her benzos, the fentanyl that she got mixed together, there was no bringing her back. None. Yeah. No Narcan, no nothing could have saved her. But if you, if somebody uses fentanyl, even by itself, isn't that likely to... Um, I'm not an expert on chemicals. I'm just telling you one thing <laughs> that I just learned based off of her death. Oh. I'm not either, I'm but I've, oh. any I've seen it happen. Is bad. It's bad news bears. All of it. Okay. And that's why I refuse, like when I'm going to get therapy or whatever, they're going to try to tell me I need to take a drug and I'm going to be in strict opposition to that anyway. So it's almost even pointless to go unless someone's just sitting there to hear me out like you are right now. This is therapy for me. Do you feel any better or not really? 100%. Oh, I feel, yes. At the beginning of this, I felt depressed, scared, and now I feel empowered and alive. Okay. However, that doesn't change the trajectory of what I'm going to do. Which is what? I'm leaving the state. Figuratively and metaphorically. I mean, physically and metaphorically. I'm leaving this state of mind and I'm leaving it here in Michigan. But you haven't figured out where you're going to go other than you know you're not New going York to Ohio? State right. Correct. I might travel through Ohio for a little bit of time, but after I get out of Ohio, I mean, no, I am not really. Ohio is pretty boring. I'd rather go to like Arizona, New Mexico. Te Texas is nice. I love the Riverwalk. Um, I've never been to California, but that's pretty evil over there too. Hollywood is like the worst. They need to dart him. I mean, I I, I'm not joking. California. 
They, they need to hit yeah. him. I'll probably like go a tranquilizer dart like a wild animal and then and then take him in and assess him when he wakes oh, I can't up. Afford it. Cause I only make Michigan money. Do they do that? I wow. think that's the best plan here. I got the longboard right here though. I was riding it last night. It was Lawrence. I kept it. Yep. Is there a lot of space for you to ride it or just in the parking lot? Well, and over this little hill and stuff. And all. Yeah. See, the yeah, rest, the rest of the call has gone away. They must the have sent out the word. Nice itself, but... Yeah, there's to go over freeways and stuff to get to a gas station. This isn't when I was a juvenile, I cut off a tether and tried to run away to Florida. Thank you, Iris. It was just a house tether, but we, we actually tried to run away to Florida. We got picked up in Bowling Green on some, on some bicycles. The only thing that I really hate that I'm leaving behind is the fact that my wife is having a kid. Other than that, I got nothing here. Just that baby. That's all, all. And that sucks. Like big time. But I, I mean, honestly, if this, if this court date would have went completely different from the beginning, I would be staying here. I would be obliging to everything. As soon as you said jail, snapped my brain uh, in half. Yeah, so it's your fault, Judge. Like, I'm, nope. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see where I'm being called now, and it's not jail. Jail is not meant for me. Mental institution is not meant for me. I'm totally fine. I I handle I life just fine. I'm not a violent individual. I know when to sit down and shut I think up. You're headed for both. I know of those what I'm places. doing, but I'm getting treated like an animal, and I don't. I just I'm done with it. I'm done getting drunk. I'm not going to ever use another drug. Simple as that. I'll pay you guys whatever you want. Just let me go. You'll never see me again. You'll never hear me again. Never see me again. Chris can keep the change. I'm good. I will seek professional help. Hmm. So if you want to seek professional help, why aren't you why don't you want to do it right now? You said you have an appointment. Because I don't tomorrow. want to under the supervision or under the thumb of somebody else. I don't want to be holding and having a tether on anymore. No, I'm not doing it anymore. I refuse. <laughs> He doesn't respectfully. Consent. There I you go. Refuse. I feel I've done everything up until this point to the best of my ability. The reason why I missed the drug test. Oh, good I Lord. Have no clue. Honestly, I would wake up. I call every day. I could tell you the colors that were today. There was a green, uh, aqua and, and like amber or something like that. As long as it wasn't pink, by the way, Lauren's favorite color was pink. And that's my color. You believe that. No, well, that's something. You know, I don't even need glasses. I was just trying to look smart. I was trying to blend in with you guys. Well, I only take I don't my... even need glasses. I have 2020 vision. My eyes are just fine. These are blue light glasses. Someone told me they look good. So I was like, okay, oh, I'll wear them. That's good. My, my eyes are shot, so I don't have great vision. I have impeccable vision. I could be a pilot. Have you ever thought about being a pilot? <laughs> no, I'm afraid of heights. So you've never flown anywhere? Well, yeah, I've definitely flown, but like my palms are like sweating like crazy. I, can't believe, and I usually take a couple of shots. I can't believe he's still hanging in with this call. Is that how you got out to Las Vegas was by flying? Yep, that was super fun. You got to see the canyons and all that stuff. Yeah. Frickin' Vegas, man. I'll tell you what happens in Vegas did not stay because we carried that crap back home. Yeah. And then you announced a lot of talk with Mike. I do miss my first wife. But I honestly miss Lauren much you, more. How many times have you been married? I, it's just Emily, the girl that showed up that first day, super pretty girl, pregnant. Like, she was like, I picked a good one. I know I did. Like, I found her when she was 18. She was singing and playing guitar on stage at church. And I was like, they have angels here. And um, I pursued her despite the fact that she should have never gotten with me. She did. And uh, I was only six months out of jail when I first got with her. Six months. And um, oh, good we were Lord. together for seven years. 
We went to Disney five times in the past three years. When did you go to Disney? Which time? I mean, five times out of the past three years. I wrote Guardians of the Galaxy. I wrote all of it. Like, it was all super fun. I, I treated her special, as special as you could treat anyone. And she still left me because I changed from Jesus to Yeshua. That's, that's why she left. And she came to the courtroom and said, he's been drinking, smoking weed. And that's got to be why his brain is where he is. On, on, uh, I, was a, I was a youth leader at the church for the teenagers for five years. They trusted me around the kids to teach them out of the Bible. But Bible says those who teach are going to be weighed more heavily. And as soon as I found this new truth, I said, I need to be done with this. Why is that? Why, is that? Why are they waiting Because I was teaching falsehoods out, out the wazoo that I, I believe to be true for the past 18 years of my life. 19 years. Sorry, I'm 31 now. I'm a very mathematically minded individual and I love words. Lauren, the one that just passed, had a 4.3 in uh, GPA in college and she was a literature major. Where did she go to college? Columbus. Where she was raped. And so when was the last time you went to Disney? Um, it had to be like October. No, no, October was Vegas. It was uh, September. Yeah, we went to Disney. Then we went to Vegas. We went to go up to Tawas. Like we would do it all because I run my own business. I take care of everything for Emily. I took care of everything for Lauren too. Like I said, I run about a half a million dollar business that equates to about $200,000 a year after her taxes and everything based on my profit margins of what I sell and what I do. Okay. My wives don't ever need to work, but yet they think they, Lauren was good. Emily tried to fit me and conform me into a box and a mold of what she thought a husband should be, which is not the way that it works. It's the pecking order is God, husband, wife, then kids. Right now she's putting the kids above me, which is why everything is come to such destruction. She gets, she gets it wrong. She doesn't, you know, I told her that we're unequally yoked. You know what she thinks that means? Something to do with eggs. Oh, what does it mean? <laughs> so when you have one bull, it can pull a thousand pounds. How many can two bulls pull? I'm 3, sorry. 3,000 pounds. What, what this is happen? awful. A wooden yoke. If you're unequally yoked, you're walking like this. Oh, Lord. If you're unequally yoked, it's not going to work. Okay. Yes. she agreed to it in sickness and in health, which was a lie. You know what lying Judge is? Judge the is a you hero for doing this. Death. She brought death to our marriage. Or pretending to care for two hours, it might it's keep this man alive. It's all out right here. It's just, you know, it's all good. I get it. So where were you a youth leader at? Northline Church in Taylor. Ryan Bettinger is the main pastor. It's one of my best friends for many years. He's got a much lower handicap than me, too. I taught his kids. Three of them. Lexi, Allie. I can't say the last one because he's a juvenile still. So. I was the favorite youth leader. Out of all of them. How long has it been since you stopped? Um... Being youth leader. I stepped down in March. Um, 23? It is. This might is been, wild. might have been April, actually. It was just, yes, it was just, this all happened just now. All of this. The past five months of my life, I've been told I should write a book about. And what do you think about that? I think that just speaks to how ridiculous everything that's been happening to me really is due to the fact that I really haven't done much. I smoked marijuana, which was legal at the time before I got this pro, uh, a tether um, bond. I'm not even sentenced yet. Like we're at the point where I'm not even sentenced. It's just, and if it was Dickerson, I would have been like, throw away the key. I don't want probation. I want nothing. Just sentence me now. Put me in Dickerson. I'll get my hot Cheetos and ramen noodles and I'll be fine. This place, Wayne County? Oh, heck no. Heck no. Never again. And I got new side. I, if I would have got old side, I'd be dead right now. 
I will run for my life like a gazelle does from a cheetah. Did you know a gazelle cannot run a cheetah? Even though a cheetah is the I fastest like animal on earth? You want to know why? Why? Because they both have two different agendas. One's running because it's hungry and the other one's running for its life. And that's scripture. Again. I base everything I do and think off of the word. And when I don't, destruction comes about every time. That's why I get in trouble for the most minute of things. The tiniest little thing I do incriminates me. What, what do you mean by that? I got drunk in a city full of bars. Here we are three months later, still talking about it. Trying to lock me up again. At the beginning of all this, trying to lock me up again. For getting drunk in a city full of bars because I was going through a divorce and I depended on alcohol, which I shouldn't have done. And I recognize that. I do recognize that actually getting drunk is a sin. I should not have gotten drunk. And I've paid for it dearly already. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Absolutely. Judge gets it's the unfair, drink. Completely unfair. I didn't even drive. I wasn't even driving. And there's two sides to every story. Here's the thing. People were saying I was acting crazy. You think I just acted crazy for no reason? No, I was provoked. And I'm not going to get into that, but it was evil what was happening to me. And that's why I needed to get out of there. And I wanted my keys back, which I never got. And the keys were to your home or your van? My Saturn Sky, my five-speed stick. Drop top. Oh, Lord. The one that I need to sell now that I can't enjoy anymore. Indeed. Why is that? Because I'm leaving the state. I can't pack it up in the van. It's going to serve me no value any longer. I might as well keep it in the bank for child support purposes. Have you ever seen the movie Pig with Nicolas Cage? That's a new one. It just lives in the woods with the pig because his wife died and the pig represented his wife. And that was it. And then someone stole his pig and then he was alone. It's a good movie. I'm only telling you about it because I don't think you'll ever watch it, but it was good. Well, Lauren showed me that one too. Pig. What's that? Pig. That's the, that's the name of the movie? Pig, like swine. Pig. Uh, the docket was emptied. Which, by the way, is not food. You should never eat pig. It's On an emergency stuff. basis, is my guess. And you are what you eat, so inadvertently. This has been going on for about two hours. Eating pig. It's my biggest suggestion. So I've, never, I've never heard of the movie Pig. Oh, it's so good. I think but it's guilty to violation of bond conditions. Also. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll help you to understand mental illness. Like, there's two sides to every story. Sometimes three or four. Well, I, I think that there's three sides to every story, at least. <clears throat> yeah, no one ever gets to listen to mine. And, you know, we did today. That's cool. being heard today, for sure. I appreciate this amount of time that you've given me to talk. Well, I'm glad that you've had that time to talk. <clears throat> if that's the case, I think she would have ended it. It's not as if she is not being fed information about what is happening outside of the courtroom. If I were to guess.
So I know that today you're not, it's not a work day for you. What are your plans tomorrow after your appointment? Indeed it is. I have multiple calls, multiple people who want me at their establishments to address their HVAC issues. Where do your where are your clients usually at? Um, everywhere in Michigan. I mean, have you ever Googled my business before? No, I am not. I have the best. I have the best one downriver. The absolute. I own the best company downriver based on Google. That's why I get called so much. I had a five rating before Lauren passed. After she passed, I got a bunch of um, weird things. People saying he kicked my dog, or don't let him near your children, or just all these false accusations of bulls. This and so uh, it still has a four point nine rating. Like it's really hard to tear down what I've built, but God's helped me build. I could literally just sell I my mean, business seriously. based on the revenue, uh, I, the track record of revenue, and the amount of regular clients I have. But that would be silly because. If I could just make residual income, not residual, I still would have to dispatch. So I technically still got to work a little bit, but I like being involved in the business that I put together. You know, my initials are AC. You're correct. Yeah, that's 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 kind of meant for air conditioning, uh, repairman and replacing. I, yes, I picked that up for air <laughs> yeah. conditioning. <laughs> Yeah, Judge. Everything yeah, I made the connection. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to see it in the moment. Come on, authorities, get there. No tether, no jail for me, and I'll do anything for that not to happen. And I'm just being honest with you. I'm not going to say to your face, I'm not going to tickle your ear with some type of lie and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go there and be there. and da, da, da. No, I'm not. I'm not. What do you mean? I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you I'm going to go somewhere and do something that I'm not going to do, like go to a hospital or anything like that. In fact, I'm probably not going to go to that therapy appointment any longer because I already no, told you where it was at. No doubt about it. And what time? <laughs> no, you didn't tell me what time. There were other and people on this call. You just indicated team wellness. Okay, I believe there's multiple the recording, you'll find it. That they must have told to leave. I believe there's multiple locations. I got three I already know what it feels like to look over my shoulder everywhere I go. And um, that's going to be exponentially increased if I stay here in Michigan. So, and I know your capability and tendencies. Which and that's why. not a stab at you. It's just, it's, it's lock people up for petty things. So I'm just calling a spade a spade. It's no disrespect. I mean, it is what it is. It's just doing a job. But I've been told Judge DeSanto in Wyandotte is the worst place, the worst judge you want to stand in front of. And I can attest to, yeah, that's facts. That is big facts. I've never what? dealt with, I, and I've been in and out of the system for years before uh, seven years ago, for years. And I've never had it this bad. Nowhere near. Not even close. Bar none. You, you like that one? Bar none, Chris. <laughs> he said a lot of no crazy things. For me. But telling the judge That's they have a bad fun. reputation might be the craziest. So for the 15th, you might as well put no show. Absolutely. So you're telling me you're not going to show up at all? I'm telling you, I'm leaving within the next day or two. I'm going to be out of here. Probably a thousand miles distance from, from this current location. Yeah. I'm d I doubt I don't that. have a passport either. I will be in no I America. seriously doubt that. I've never been to New York. I told you it was in the New York state of mind. That sounds cool. 
my friend uh, Dylan, he started an ice cream shop and he's all, he's like TikTok famous. It's called uh, Catching the Cream or whatever that is. He's got like 11 million followers on TikTok. He's from here. And I always said, oh, I want to go see your shop, dude. And so he was supposed to make our, first, our wedding cake on my first wife, but he was too big and mm -hmm. busy. He didn't, he didn't make it? No. No, because he already had like 350,000 followers at that point. And it was too too big for us. 350 what? Thousand followers on TikTok. Now he's at 11 million or oh. something. Yeah. Gary V helped him start his business. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool story. And where is he located? I don't drag Gary V in, in this. New York. Uh, somewhere in Times Square or whatever. I don't know. But here's one thing I will say. As a result of me being on the run, so to say, you best believe my nose is going to be clean everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I, yeah. Wow. And I have no business getting any other girls pregnant with uh, my current state with the law. So, okay. You know, first Corinthians chapter the seven, on that. one says it's better for a man not to touch a woman. And I, I clearly see why. And why is that? If, if it weren't for Emily, if it weren't for any of the girls that I got with based on, because I can't shut, I can't handle my own lustful desires. Um, if I would have never gotten with a girl, I would have never dealt with a divorce. Would have never led me to depression. I would have never uh, gotten with Lauren. There wouldn't be all this destruction in my past as a result of me thinking I needed a woman. I, I'm, I'm much better off just clinging to God and, and controlling my lustful temptations. And I know it sounds good on paper, but I've been practicing it like and like I, yeah, I have nothing but pure intentions from this day forward, but I am not doing this anymore. Can't, I can't. And what is this? Anything to do with this judicial system and why not any recommendation, unless it's, hey, you're good. Hopefully we never see you again. Shake hands, peace out. You're, you have a fine of fifteen hundred dollars to go. Come, please pay that. And I'd be up there and I'd go pay it, and I'd be I'd get the heck out of there. I'd tell the probation officer, "Sorry for being rude a couple times. Uh, I'm I'm sorry for everything." I'd say, "Chris, that was fun, you know." I give you a reference for the next time you need that air conditioner fixed in the future, if you ever need it. Not that I've ever touched it before. I'm just saying, if you ever needed it. I'm not kidding. It's either way, even if I got off or I don't get off, I'm leaving the state. Period, point blank, I'm gone. I have a calling somewhere else that's very important. And you know, if things don't pan out, maybe it's possible I might just be like, you know what, I'll just come turn myself back in and, and call it a day. That didn't really work out. You know, I was wrong. I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. A wise man accepts correction. I've received enough correction from you guys. Enough, more than enough. I, I don't think so. What correction is that? You guys sent me to jail. Dude, I'm, I mean, sorry, man. Have you ever stepped foot in that jail? Just to observe where you're sending people? Wayne yeah. County jail? Yeah, yeah, like, have you ever, ever observed where you're sending people? Just went in there and saw the mold on the ground or the cockroaches crawling around or the violence that takes place, the blood on the walls, the toilets full of Wait. poop that you can't even use. The kind of food that they give you, the way that they give it to you. you tell me the Wayne the County Jail isn't nice. Where you're sending people. It's hell on earth. I have, I have not seen that. <clears throat> Chris has seen it. That's why he was trying to go to bat for me a little bit to say, hey, please don't. But it wasn't really going to bat. It was more like a t-ball from a four-year-old.
Last time, the only reason why I got my tether off is because I mentioned it at the last moment, and then he came on my behalf and spoke up. But had I not said anything, he was just going to be passive and let it go. And then give me some bullcrap line of reasoning why, well, she would have done this or she would have done that. I don't believe that. I don't believe it at all. I believe that this is a monopoly system that's that's I'm in the loop of that I need to get out of. What do you mean like by that monopoly breathe. system? A monopoly system. You guys sold me alcohol, then locked me up for it. Oh, he's a victim. Who's you guys? The court, right? the court didn't sell you any alcohol, did we? Wine dot. Oh. It's a big monopoly. Oh, and then if you need your car towed, who, who tells it? I, the two officers that were uh, sending me away, the grope kids, their dad. It's a whole monopoly. It's a whole system. I see it. I'm not dumb. The whole thing is just designed for failure of anyone who doesn't actually live in Wyandotte or know the police. Well, I have no inside information. And nobody cares. But nobody I can't imagine cares. any other reason nobody why cares. we're letting this go on. We're just no saying. cares about what? Well, the rules. You're eating in the courtroom. Because you're above the law. I'm not above the law. Aren't we not supposed to eat in the courtroom? You're correct. I'm Fine. having a little bit of a snack because I did not eat breakfast this morning. Well, we can justify anything. We can justify anything. And that's the most dangerous thing that we have is justification because I can justify anything that I do. Did you eat breakfast this morning? No, I don't eat breakfast. I go out and earn something before I eat. Back in the day, you couldn't eat until you went out and killed a lion and brought it home to the family. I have to go out and kill a lion before I deserve to eat a thing. And how are you going to do that? Well, it's a figurative statement. I, I have to go out I, and I provide. That. Today's a spiritual day I provided for myself yesterday that's called preparation. So are you going to eat lunch? Preparation age? More than likely. I don't know the future to that extent. Maybe I'll fast for the rest of the day and be in prayer because I believe in fasting and prayer. In fact, I'm a vegetarian. It's a lifelong fast. I just started right before Lauren passed. I love vegetables, which is ironic that she was in a vegetative state for her last couple of days. Now that's funny. I don't mind if you eat. I just, you know, it is what it is. Whenever we point the finger at someone, we got three pointing back at ourselves. Amen. All good questions. All things I'm sure law enforcement is dealing with right now. I've heard that statement before. Just saying. Good thing we have a female judge. They have a lifetime of bad dates to fall back on in these scenarios. And so you said that <clears throat> you haven't spoken to your dad much? Not anymore. He has me blocked because I call him out on his bull crap too. And he doesn't like it because when we're shed the light, we want to cling to our darkness. Again, Galatians 4, 16. Now that I've told you the truth, have I become your enemy? Look at that. Someone just texted me. Hey, can you loan me 40 until Friday? I just gave another friend $1,000 the other day. He said, hey, can I get $1,000 so I can get a trailer for my business? All big, um, all big, uh, I forget what the business is called. Yes, going on by, man. Bam. Thousand bucks right out of my pocket. Cash. You would think. That's what I do. And I said, don't worry about paying me back because if you don't pay me back, we're still going to be friends. Unless Money he's using a VPN friends. or something like that. Which wouldn't surprise me with this guy. <clears throat> Freaking cockroach. <laughs> You ever seen one of these? It's a bug with salt. Fill it up with salt. Oh, shoot, the safety's on. Boom, no more cockroach. Oh, wow. I mean, this thing was nasty. They're way worse. Let me tell you. And I can't bring that in there with me. Well, aren't you? <clears throat> the room that you're in isn't very clean. 
I thought it was pretty nice. This is actually the uh, most therapeutic uh, past four days that I've had was uh, being in this hotel room. Um, everywhere else I've stayed, I've had problems with every single person I've ran into. I only stay one place a night. Every single time, there's something that just happens that I rub against the grain the wrong way. And it's just but the signs are telling me, oh, all right, time to go. I think the fact that he's time being to go, listened time to. Time to go, time to go. But there is one place that I need to go. And uh, I expect big things to happen. Prophetically, I do believe the sky is going to be rolled back, peeled back. Like that, it's called the heavenly scrolls, the constellations. That's our actual Bible. And um, he's going to descend on us. The word rapture does not exist in scripture. It's not a real word. We're going to see the dead in him rise first. Lauren will be one of them. Rise up. And then we're going to have a tough time here on earth. A very tough time here on earth. The true followers, the true believers. And his, I need his to be attorney around those like-minded out. believers. I haven't heard him say a word. In a, the only thing that I feel hours. terrible about is to go meet up with this like-minded group of believers and conceal from them the fact that I'm on the run. But that makes sense. I, I am going to be carrying, bearing that weight, and I'm probably just going to have to be honest with them because um, the truth sets you free. Despite the fact that she, he, that instance, he's insulting you're her. Lock me up. Then I told you the truth. Now you're saying I'm not going to lock you up. The truth set me free in a very small way at first. I mean, we're off to a decent start. But all I did was tell you the truth. The, this dynamic with the judge is working. And that truth being what? My intentions. At first, I said, oh, I have suicidal thoughts. You're like, whoa, pump the brakes. If I wouldn't have spoke up and told you the truth, I'd be going to jail right now. And that's a promise of scripture. You asked for another one? You asked for another promise of scripture? The, tr the truth sets you free. Which, by the way, he is the truth. The way, the truth, and the life. And so, is what you said earlier the truth? Uh, there is one part that I did, I did. I will take back. I was there when Lauren did the cocaine. That is the, the one thing that I will come clean about right now. And um, the her, her head fell into my lap. And her lips went blue. And the other day, a song turned on and said, Baby Blue Ain't Your Color. You know that song? Yeah, that, that had me break down. And uh, because I was a youth leader in the church, I'm CPR certified, not that serious, just four-hour course or whatever. And I administered CPR on her. And it, 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 it didn't work. Anthony, if I were you, I would stop talking about the details because everything you're saying can and will be used against you. So this is not what Seriously. this proceeding is about. So just your advice, my advice to you is I would not go into detail about this. Thank you. And so everything else you said earlier today was the truth? Everything else was the truth. <laughs> but I witnessed death. However, I spoke with Wayne County and there's no, no one's being charged with anything like that. I get what Chris is saying that I shouldn't be around an environment like that. And that's probably part of my bond conditions. Uh, he's going to implicate However, himself in, the, in that going. death if, that he, that if he doesn't stuff. shut his hole. I walked in on that. Now I wear her ring on my chain. It fell off during CPR from the, uh, the EMS. And what kind of ring is that? Because he it's sees the situation. The studios. It's the wise play. It was a birthstone. When did you get it? He needs to when stay there long it? enough to get picked up. Um, the day after no two ways said, about yes, it. I actually proposed to her with shoes. That's my love language. Shoes. Shoes. Oh, I proposed to her with a pair okay. of Yeezys. Yeah, shoes. Yeezys. Yeezys. His love language. Yeah. I gave. I had a lot of Yeezys. I had about twelve pairs of Yeezys, and I give them away. And I usually give them away to someone I'm going to witness to because it breaks down walls. Because most people can't afford Yeezys. I had way too much stuff. And I got rid of it. I started to remove all the puffery in my life. I got rid of my Pokemon stuff. I had like five thousand dollar Pokemon. You get Yeezys in the love language. I gave away all my uh, shoes. And the reason why song. I did shoes. The reason why I used shoes is because there's a scripture that says, "How beautiful are the feet 
of those who bring the good news. Anyone that wore a size 11 and say, what size two are you? 11, ooh, do you like Yeezys? Boom. But her specifically, I proposed to with Yeezys just because it's part of my love language. And I don't believe in the traditions of men. Why did I have to propose with a ring? I didn't have to. I proposed with shoes. And the two became one flesh. And that is what marriage is technically, not the piece of paper that follows. That's just for legality. I will say shoes is interesting. I've never, never thought of it like that. Never, Everybody has their I've own. I've never heard of. The whole point is, she said yes. And uh, for that, I'm forever grateful. She is who I should have been with from the beginning. You still talk to her brother, who you said, I think you said is your friend? It sure is. He stopped talking to us the day we got together. He didn't get to speak to her one time in the last few months of her life because he rejected her and our relationship. So now he bears that guilt. He'll never talk to me again. And he was my best friend. Oh, the lawyer knows exactly. We're the best man. We've been friends. We used to work at the Mancinos over there. And we used to work at the Mancinos together over there in Wyandotte um, back when I started heating and cooling school. And he was the manager. And uh, we worked under Mike. I don't know if you know Mike was the owner. And um, we used to hang out and drink alcohol and have fun and um, smoke weed. And um, it was about 10 years ago. I, I don't have any external information. 11 years. Yeah. Something but I like can that. think of no I other scenario. The bus over there in Wyandotte, down 4th Street, take it all the way to Melbourneville. And then my friend would drive me from Melbourneville to Dorsey over in Wayne, which is actually around the block from where Lauren's house was. So it all came full circle. Every day I went to Lauren's, I saw Dorsey. I saw the school I went to for HVAC, which was hilarious to me well how long ago was that then i went to heating and cooling school yes that was the same time frame i started working at mancinos when i started heating and cooling school i quit wendy's and went to mancinos in the middle of hvac school 11 years ago We used to go across the street to Johnny Max and then buy alcohol, come back, and I'd work. I wasn't driving. I'd be making um, pizza. And um, just, I was reminded of it last night because I had a Lunchable, all cheese, cheese pizza, Lunchable. It reminded me of Mancino's. Well, it looks like he's in a hotel. Hmm. And he's and he's claims to be armed. Do you? How long did you work at Mancino's? Uh, probably about a, not even a year. So yeah, not even probably, a year because the HVAC to, school was only nine months long. Quietly so as as evacuate. I, that, I went and got a job at Atar Enterprises over there on Fourth Street. People nearby. Another coin company for nine dollars an hour, <laughs> less than I was making at Mancino's. I, I don't know the procedure, which is also but hilarious. I can see where it could be complicated. But you got to start somewhere. You do have to start somewhere. Yeah. I do have to start somewhere. It's weird. I think he knows they're they're coming to get him. So you don't want to get treatment anymore either? That's all she says. Not with a tether. Tell us about your number one HVAC so pickings, I, please. Um, do you mind if I step off for just one moment so I can double check how that would work? Absolutely. Okay. I want to step off for just one second, okay? No problem. Oh, boy. The attorney's in a tough spot there because he's got a duty to his client. So you don't want to be asking the attorney to step in to help this procedure. 
The best you can ask for is for him to not get in the way. This is a weird, weird scenario. I'm shocked he's still there. Shocked. This, I, I mean, I wasn't prepared for this. I, I, I was uh, watching it in the beginning, and I was going to do it later, but I didn't know it would go on like this. And it, it just, I mean, we joke a lot about about hearings getting worse. This is, uh, this is the most extreme example that I've ever seen. They just want to get him in custody so everyone is safe, including him. If I had to guess, I'm guessing, completely speculating. What do I know? Country lawyer in Chicago. Yes. Or additionally, she might she might just literally need a bathroom break. She's been sitting on the, on the bench for hours now because of this. She had a call going, then this got called. That my guess is he knows, but he is so enjoying the therapy and actually having someone listen to him for the first time that he's just willing to go with it. By the way, kudos uh, to Judge DeSanto. Uh, you know, I went to law school. We're not trained in how to deal with this. Make, making small talk to save somebody's life uh, mid-hearing, that, that, that's not a course in law school. Absorbing insult after insult and pretending like it's all okay. I don't think he runs. My guess is law enforcement has his location now and is is in the vicinity. So if he tries to go anywhere, he 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 gets nabbed. That is my guess. I think they've delayed long enough that they should know where he is. Pure speculation on my part. But if he if he walks out the door of that that place Agreed. Uh, you know, I, I, at first you think he's just sort of a, in the, along the lines of a sovereign citizen or some citizen or just or just a whiner, or a guy lost in his feelings, which is kind of funny. We've we've gone well past that. He, this may be manipulation or he may be crazy. I don't know. I'm not the professional on that point. But in any any way you slice it, this is <clears throat> an emergent situation the way I see it right now being handled well. Why would he do a lot of the things he does? But that is odd. I agree.
He he had a violation for drinking and violating his bond conditions that he pled guilty to much earlier today. Okay, so um, <clears throat> Anthony, um, I know you want me to not send you to jail and not tether you. So I'm just, I was trying to find out how I could do that and make sure that you're coming back on Monday. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> as long, <laughs> mm, you know that, you know what? Uh, Zoom is good. I will be here for a Zoom meeting. I enjoyed this conversation. Can I say one thing before you want to know how? I've never seen anything like go, this. There's always a sign that I'm in the right place. And you know what I just noticed for the first time during this conversation? I, I've been going back to Hebrew roots on everything. And I called Lauren Elisheva. You know why? Because her middle name was Elizabeth. And we were both baptized at Elizabeth Park. I'm going to leave it at that. But I just appreciate that your name's Elizabeth in this moment, regardless of what else you're going to say. Okay. When were you baptized at Elizabeth Park? Um, about uh, three weeks before she was, and she, and she was just baptized. Oh, my God. It was beautiful. My dad did it. And I recorded it, and it's on my Instagram. And she even claimed the last name Carmona in that video. He said, I, I hereby baptize Elizabeth Lauren. What's your last name? She says, Count Carmona. It wasn't long ago. I got baptized in the proper spirit. And in the same way that I've been yeah. witnessing. It, yeah, my dad. In the same way that I've been witnessing to you guys. Is how I did it in jail. And everywhere I go, all I do is live by the word of my testimony. So even in this moment, I thought that this was going to be super crappy, just a Zoom meeting court date, but you guys have given me a platform to actually speak truths from the Bible. And you never know who you're going to get to talk to about what you need to talk about. I'm even thankful for this moment. Even though it doesn't seem like it. Well, glad that you feel better that you've been able to talk about express myself. Yes, I'm optimistic that they're going to get him without incident, but I don't know. But so, how do we resolve the issue at hand? What's your What's your suggestion? Well. I Here's my suggestion. I'll talk to you again on the 15th and I'll tell you about all the therapy and AA and whatever else I've done. And then you can make your determination on whether or not I've gotten time served. And I'll pay whatever costs and fines that day of. There will be no payment plan. I will pay everything that day. And you'll never hear me again unless it's something awesome or you need HVAC work because I'm fantastic at what I do. I was upset that they told me. To sorry. I'm sorry. I, I was I was upset that the therapist told me that I'm only allowed to get one hour. I was upset about that. I was like, I need at least three for my first session. I guarantee it. Not in a group. I need a one-on-one, -on -one and I'm hoping that I get. I'm hoping my therapist is someone very special. So and I want to apologize just to Chris for anything that I might have said this. What do you mean? Go ahead. You can continue. Well, That's first, true. I just want to, I want to apologize to you and to Chris for anything that I may have said that was hurtful or insinuating. I am sorry. 
because I'm not, you know, they say hurt people hurt people in AA, and I definitely am guilty of that, but I've been working on kindness. It, you know, being smart is a blessing and a curse because I tend to just twist what people say. I'm really good at that. And I hate that I am. It's actually disgusting. Why is that? Why is it disgusting? Well, because I, my ego causes me to think I'm better than others and just mess with people for no reason. And now that I'm beginning to understand firsthand mental illness, I realize that I'm just so wrong in so many levels, and I have been for a long time, but I'm getting better, and I'm going to continue to get better. The jail is not going to build my character. Treatment, treatment may help. I, that's what I need. I need to talk. I need to write things down. I need to listen to other people. That I, I agree with. Correction. Because a wise man accepts correction. And a wise man also understands that what he does and what happens to him are connected. The fool believes they're disconnected. That's another scripture. That's some Proverbs. I'm not sure which what reference it is. So is there but yeah, that would be that would be my Oh, go ahead. That would be my hope is that um, is that you, the next court date you're like you know what I see your point you're all good you messed up you got a lot going on sometimes it's hard to make phone calls see I don't work a nine to five job so it's hard for me to make sure I'm gonna make it to a specific the the one okay I can remember the one that I did miss on the 13th was because I was at a job in St Clair Shores and there was no way for me to make it so I had to. The person out there was being very upset with me. And they said, if you don't finish the job today, I'm suing you. So now I was caught between a rock and a hard place. Make it to my drug test or get sued. Oh, I got an expensive lawyer. Not super expensive, but I paid more than I ever have for a lawyer. And I was like, I'll be fine. No. No. I should have said, screw that job. But then again, I could have got sued for that. But that would have been a civil matter. And you know, it's just this whole complex I went through in my brain. And I said, I might as well finish the job while I'm here. So I can get paid and not get sued. And did you finish that job? Oh, yeah. I got paid big bucks. Oh, yeah. A lot of money. A lot of money. I took a picture of it and put it on my Instagram story. Again, ego. I'm wrong for that. I'm wrong for that. Customers typically pay me cash. And I, I mean, I, and I report it, but it's just really nice because I always have cash. <sighs> Except ironically, the last time I went to jail, I didn't have my wallet. So I had no commissary, no way to get commissary or anything. My dad, remember, I don't know if you remember Mr. Carmona, you're driving around the parking lot and he said he didn't have pants, but he had shorts on. And it was like really funny. Um, he had to go that. to my house and I told him. Yeah, I had to, yeah, you, you have an impeccable memory. He, um, he said, or he, I told him where my cash was when he found it and we were on the phone. He was like, oh my gosh. I look like a drug dealer or something. <laughs> How much cash that I leave in a spot um, for, and my wife, she had full access to it. Emily, like, I think she's a fool for leaving me just because I got drunk one night and claim a different faith, but. I've supplied her that health a lot too. When you were in Vegas? Um, yeah, yeah, the one that I went to Vegas with, that one, yeah. Lauren got it. Lauren was like, oh no, this guy, I don't even need to work. Like she sat on the couch all day and played with her dog because that's what she needed because her mental health was not there. She saw therapists often. She actually diagnosed me before my therapist did. And what did she that? diagnose you with? Um, bipolar, um, major depressive, and the worst case of OCD she's ever seen in her life. And she understands all of it because she's been in and out of all of it. Like she actually gets it. She doesn't need college to, to understand mental illness. She knows it. And that's why I'm suggesting to you that movie Joker. It's a very good movie, a very good movie. I'd say probably my favorite movie outside of anything like spiritual. I'm probably gonna watch it after this.
Well, I wrote it down so I don't forget the name of it. Amazing. Just even if you, even if you just watch the ends, just watch the last half hour of it. It's so good. So good. Even whether you like Batman or not, it's so good. Can you understand the movie with only watching the last half an hour? No, you should watch the whole thing for context. Like, honest, and you're a smart lady, like, and I'm not saying that to puff you up or nothing. Like, when you watch this, like, you're probably going to cry. Not for me or Lauren or anything, like, just in general. And he doesn't die in the end. Like, it ends up happy. It ends up happy. Oh, Chris probably hasn't seen it either. It's a good one, Chris. Nightcrawler, that's another good one. But anyway. I've seen it, Anthony. Joker? So good. So good. So good. So good. So what are your plans? I mean, how long are you planning on staying at the motel or the hotel that you're at? I know, right? Cockroaches implies that it could have been a motel. But um, um well, I mean, if everything's gonna move smooth, cordial, and I'm gonna avoid jail and tether. I'll do whatever you want, honestly. I'll stay here. I'll do whatever you want. But I do have a trip that I, it's a 10 day camping trip that I need to go to. It's not some crazy. Right, Missouri. Yeah, it's, there's no, like, we're not doing drugs and all that or nothing. I can even send you videos about what it's about. It's a spiritual gathering that I crave, that I need, I'm called to go to. And I'll be back from there. Like, the whole trajectory of my life could change. I won't be on the run if if I, I want to be here for my kid. I want to run my business. I, I want I want to function properly in society. But the moment I heard jail, I recoiled from it like a hot flame. I'm like, ah, no, go away, gone, goodbye. That's a, that's actually an AA reference. We recoil from alcohol like uh, our hand to a stove. Bill W wrote that. Who wrote that? Bill W. Wilson, Bill Wilson, the uh, founder of AA. Oh. It's in the big book. I don't trust the big book. I trust I trust my Bible. Oh, sorry. And then this one, this is the one that I studied for um, the uh, translation, um, misinterpretations and, and transliterations based on our division through language. I've done some very deep study in, um, in scripture and uh, Yeah. This is not a good I know time. Where I'm supposed to go. It sounds to me like the judge is fishing for where is he? I won't run. I won't run. If, if... And I want to see therapists. I want. I want to talk to people. I want good. I want truth. I want life. But I won't lie to you. Sometimes life becomes so overwhelming and overbearing. Traumatic. I agree with you. It sure does. It sure does. Jail was horrible this last time. Horrible. Horrible. I was scared I wasn't going to make it out. For good reason. The intimidation I received was very convincing. And they thought it was funny. I was specifically told to my face, I hate fucking white people. And that the dude had HIV and he was gonna bite me in the jugular. First moment he got. And I said, well, there goes my life if that happens. For one specific purpose, so he can get out of quarantine and go to Bam Bam, so that way he can get out. Just like I would have just been like a, a tool to be used, just for him to get out of the room that he was in because he was uncomfortable for a moment. It was the worst, the the worst.
I have no mm. Ill, Ill intentions for anybody, not even myself. It's my best guess. But fear is... You said you, said you did earlier. That's why I was concerned. I wanted to catch your attention, and it was truthful. However, do I think I could actually put a gun in my mouth and pull the trigger with my towel? Well, who knows? Who knows what anyone's capable of these days? When people are desperate, they'll do anything. If I go to jail, I consider myself already dead. I just don't want to suffer during the process. So yes, I would rather die than go to jail. That is very, that is very much. Now, any other jail? Fine. Dickerson? I'm mean, like, oh, this is fun. I'm going to work out. I'll do a bunch of chin-ups. I don't need to cleanse. This ain't Dickerson anymore. Dickerson was fine. Totally fine. Wayne County? No. They need to level that thing, build the soccer field, split between misdemeanors and felonies, put you with like, um, not like-minded, like violated, like offended individuals, not killers with public intoxicants. That was horrible, horrible. I would not wish it on my worst enemy. I know so. I know a rapist right now who's walking around free, and I don't have the heart to send him there. How about that? I was like, he'll get, he'll get, he'll get it so bad here. It's just not even fair. By the way, so I've been trying. Oh, go. Why do I think that? What were you saying? I'm sorry. Why do I think that he might? Why? I, I value your question. So go ahead. Why do you think that there is such a difference between Dickerson and Wayne County Jail? I don't think I know, ma'am. I, I can tell you in Wayne, in, in Dickerson, everyone that you go there with, not a single, I, I don't remember a single person in there with a felony. And when they're in there, they're waiting to get out. They're, they're just trying to play spades, which by the way, I'm really good at spades. I'm better at spades than I am at Uber. Um, that's where I, I mean, I connected with a lot of individuals in there and actually in Dickerson, good people. Um, and I connected with that yep. people. At 17 years old, I wasn't even scared to be in Dickerson. It was totally fine. We watched movies. We got commissary. We got, um, I got released early by a couple days. Like it was totally fine. It was like being grounded a little bit worse than being grounded. I can do that. It gave me time to sit alone with my Bible. In Wayne County, I'm telling you, you are alongside criminal, criminals that are telling you how to, uh, that, that will tell you how you can get away with murder, literally. It's horrible. Not only that, there's black mold all over the place, cockroaches. It smells disgusting. And you're scared for your life. You have a sign right there that says, if you rape someone, these will be the charges. If? Are you kidding me? I crawled on the ground to get under a couple of individuals. There's this old black guy that was heavy set and he was sitting there sleeping on the bench. I said, I'm going to crawl under him because I don't think he's going to get up for a long time. And I sat under him in the fetal position and I heard people talking about me the whole time behind me saying things like, I'm about to grab him, snatch him out from under there and just yank him out here and just start beating. Him. I'm telling you, this is the truth. Because I got drunk one night and missed a couple drug tests that I'm clean for anyway. I mean, he could be in another state for all we know. I'm probably clean from marijuana today. Well, that would be good. It'd be good if it was out of my hair. I wish I was over seven years. It is not. What was that about seven? Well, after seven years, it's no longer in your hair. Oh. I wish I never touched it again. Every time that I touched marijuana, bad things happened. 
and nothing to do specifically with marijuana. But that's what I was telling you about when a man does, a, a wise man be truly believes that what he does and what happens to him are connected, even if it doesn't, even if it's not, it's not necessarily like hitting a domino when it hits the next one. It is, but it's, it's spiritual. Bad things happen to me when I do something wrong. What, like what kind of bad things? She may have well, actually had to go sign a warrant when she took that break. No, I'm making stuff up, but really? Oh my God. What's that? I knew this was going to happen, man. You guys are really locking me up. What? What are you guys doing? They're there. I think you're okay. I'm fine. I said some questionable stuff about someone. Guys, please. No, I'm good. Nothing's going to happen. I'm still on the things to judge. Yeah, we know that. What's going on with you and. I'm just scared to go to jail. No, 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 not, in, not to any degree. You guys, this is not good. Not, this is response. Santos, they're on the, the cops are here. No, no. Yeah, no. yeah, she sent them. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. No, 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 no. Well, so then at least, so we know that you're safe right now. Then. Want anyone in here? I'm scared to go to jail. I don't want anyone to come here. We can't even take you to jail for the rest of there. Okay. We can't. We can't. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. We're fine. I promise. I promise. I'm going through a divorce. My wife is okay. I just said I'm depressed beyond belief. So even if you were sentenced to jail, we're not going to be able to go? No, absolutely not. No way. No, 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 no. No. I promise. I promise that will not happen. I promise. Correct. They're taking a report, Miss Mr. Santos. I'm not, I'm I just want her to know that I'm not ignoring her. Yes. Uh, Carmel, uh, Joseph. Come on, man. Why, why are you guys? Come on, man. Where are you guys going? Please don't. First, we're good, man. We're, if we were to take you, you're already taking right? Yeah. Hey, we're not taking Spare me, man. I can't believe it. Please. It's me. My name's Yes, and I'm fine. Okay? I'm just going to close the door now. Okay, okay, okay. okay. What's your record? 6192. You guys are taking me on. Come on, man. All right, all right. Shut up all your. It's empty. There's a gun. So, Mr. Shunky, I think at this point, um, uh, deputy? Uh, deputy? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, so we weren't really sure where Mr. Carmona was located. And so um, <clears throat> he had indicated that he was going to harm himself and that he had a shotgun in the room. Yeah, well, he, we're looking for weapons right now. About that 20 gauge he was talking about. Can you be honest? Are you guys locking? Do uh do you still need us on here, ma'am? I'm sorry. Do you still need uh him to be on live still? Would you like me to keep this on? No, that no, that's okay. Are you taking him into custody? We don't know yet. He hasn't really told us anything. We have we're still talking to him. Okay, he's right as of now he's ordered to um <clears throat> report for a tether I mean to jail in Wayne County, but um you can um stay in communication with Sergeant Cons if you'd like and we can update and if you can keep us updated, we can update you as well. Okay, I have uh the sergeant's number, so I'm gonna give him a call here in about two minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. All right, we're going off the record. Okay, thank you. I know. Well, there you have it. That was a wild one. It it appears it ended well. It appears it ended well after that whole rant. They were obviously just holding him there. The cops finally show up. They come in and he's like, 
He says to the cops, you guys, this is not good. <laughs> I can laugh now that he's safe. I can laugh. <laughs> Hopefully he gets the help he needs. Hopefully he gets the help he needs. Clearly he needs a lot uh, or they sort out uh, manipulation. He he needs to either he needs either MH help or jail. One or the other for a while till till he gets himself straightened out. But uh an amazing job by Judge DeSanto. I was watching that hearing as a regular hearing and then I saw it morph into this uh, effectively uh, an, an a emergency situation and it was obvious as could be the the judge is not talking about anything that would progress a case which is what they would do everybody else on the call left it was strange he is in and out but i don't think i, I mean, he even said right after well i knew you guys were going to do this well yeah i mean how else could you think this is going to end. Did you just think you were going to just talk, talk with the judge on zoom for two and a half hours and, and then hang up and, and demand that, that, that you not get jail time or mental health, mental health, uh, uh, or a mental health requirement and then hang up and go about your business. I don't, I, I mean, he's out there, but I don't think he's delusional enough to think that was going to happen. Maybe he is. I don't know. It's beyond me. That that one was a wild one. Ah, uh, seriously, she did a great job. And then he, you know, he went back and forth. He he later got nice, and then he was again behold a man in his emotions. This is this is what you get. But um, he went back and forth, but he was just so rude to her. Not not that she cares, but still, it's it's got to be draining to sit there for two hours and just be insulted by a crazy person. It, yeah, yeah, you intellectually understand what's going on, but it gets old. And and pretend to care. I mean, the, 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 the most awkward part was him him trying to tell bad jokes that just made no sense. You're like, okay, I I'm now I'm required to have some reaction to that. But she stayed level, and she stayed there. I, I, you know, like I said, I was speculating when she took the break. She, she might have gone to sign a warrant. That's where, but I don't know where those police officers were from. I was thinking if they're out of the, if he's if he's not in Wayne County somewhere. Now you're dealing with even if he's still in Michigan. Now you're dealing with different law enforcement, and and they're they're like, well, why are we doing this? Why are we busting into this hotel? Still Fourth Amendment. So she might uh, she might have left the bench to to sign a warrant that somebody slapped together so that they could so that they could execute it. I don't know. It's not my area. I, I don't want to speculate on it. Criminal defense attorney would be better. Maybe I need uh, Derek White or Ben Bateman or somebody on here. Somebody on here to help me out with that. But that was. That was absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. I might, I might do uh, that. That that was the end. That was the stall portion of it. I might do a video on the on the first part of the hearing that I was watching because that's also very interesting later today. But I could see that that was a developing situation, so I decided to just go to it. Thankfully, ever everyone's like in here saying, "Oh yeah, the, the, you know." that we could something bad could happen. Well, no kidding. But you know, that that's why it's interesting. It's not what I was hoping for. What I was hoping for is this. I was hoping for a good rational end to this scenario. He he should be in custody now. To the extent that there are weapons involved, they should be confiscated and both he and the public should be safe for the time being. Not now we can deal with the recriminations. We can deal with the, do we need to do help? Do we need to do jail? Do we need to finish the, you know, we, we, we can get back to the legalities, but we had a, a, an emergency situation where somebody appeared to be a danger to themselves and others in real time on zoom. And I thought it was amazing how it was responded to from the judge, even his attorney, I, you know, people are saying, well, the attorney isn't saying anything. I think that was a good dynamic. 
the the attorney is in a really hard place there. He represents him. He, he you know, the, he he shouldn't be the one like selling his client out. I, he's got some ethical obligations in that regard. Number one, number two, he's a guy, and and uh, the dynamic was he was getting attention from Judge DeSanto, and that was pacifying him enough that nothing bad was happening. And I think, I think it was very wise of his attorney. He said a couple of things. He told him to shut up when he, when it appeared that he was about to incriminate himself about something much worse than he's charged with. That's appropriate. And it also lent some sort of like pseudo normalcy to the scenario. I just thought it was well handled by both his attorney and the judge is, is in short what I'm, what I'm trying to say. This is wild. I did not expect that. I had other things going on, but I was not pulling away from that situation. Thankfully, this did not end in tragedy. There's a there's a lot that can happen from here, but it did not end in tragedy, at least as far as I know. It shouldn't have. The, they, they, the officers are there. They should be able to secure him and the scene quite easily from that point. I did not... I've been doing this a long time. I did not expect to have uh, anything that intense in real time. That that was crazy. Is this the guy that I did that that was flirting with Judge DeSanto? I did a, I did a video on him. Is this that same guy? It could be. Someone was suggesting that in the chat. He told Judge DeSanto she's hot or whatever. Oh, good Lord. That's him? He, he, he violated his bond conditions by drinking. The, the charges weren't that big, although, although he had a girlfriend or wife. I, I, you know, he was so far out there, it was hard for me to follow all this, and I wasn't in from the beginning. I, I was, like, catching up. Um, somebody died recently and then he's used that as an excuse for, for why he was drinking, which whatever, that's pretty normal. Although as this thing progressed, it, it was getting on towards, um, he was talking about supplying drugs and doing things that may have implicated him in that death. Or at least was headed in that direction, potentially. I don't know. Yeah, you, I I have the video. You 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 have what it is. Thank, thankfully, we didn't have more death today. And uh, and I have no idea. But they they obviously found him. I still don't know where he was. But they got to the police. I I like how he reports. It showed how important it was to talk to the judge. He he's like, well, wait. He says the police officers. You know, I, basically, I'm still worried that that I might I'm in court with the judge. Which is really delusional, like not not seeing, not not piecing all that together immediately. He was he he announced to her that you know the police are here as if like to to make give an excuse as to why he was he was leaving the hearing. I mean the hearing had long since ended in in any legal sense and and had become a rescue operation. Wow, what a wild one! All right, well that's that. I'm, I might put together the the I'm, I, I intend to right now as we speak. I put together the beginning of that hearing and process it all later. But I'm glad I I gave up on that and just switched over to live because that was that was intense, very interesting, and it ended well, as far as I can tell. Thank you all for coming out. I'll see you soon.